Apple is still working on the Apple Car. We have some major updates in terms of that. We also have some updates when it comes to 2021 Apple processors, uh, Apple Watch Series 7, Galaxy S21 leaks, and of course, a massive Samsung Micro LED display. So without any further ado, welcome to Zenoff Tech News, episode number 13, and enjoy. Okay, so starting off with the Apple Car updates, we have some massive ones which we actually haven't had in a few years now. So Bloomberg has just reported that Apple AI chief who leads Siri and machine learning development, John Giandrea, John, uh, Giandrea. I think that's how you actually pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna call it John. So uh, apparently John now leads the Apple Car project and the daily developments now continue, which is really interesting because, you know, we've heard so many reports on the Apple Car project that the developments have stopped, but apparently no, they're in, you know, in full production and full focus. Speaking of focus, the original focus of the Apple car was that Apple wanted to essentially build a full car. Um, and then the recent focus in the past few years has switched from building an actual car into building sensors that would be embedded into different cars, like BMW cars and essentially third-party manufacturers, kind of like CarPlay currently is now. But now we do have a brand new report from Digitimes Taiwan that claims that Apple has started negotiating with well-known car electronic suppliers. We don't really know to what extent yet, but this is likely uh, in regards to dashboards and things like that. This report also claims that TSMC is now working with Apple to develop a self-driving car processor made by Apple, which, I don't know, kind of points to me that Apple is trying to focus again on the full car project, which I'll cover in just a second. Not only that, but this report also claims that Apple is working with ST Microelectronics for developing gallium nitride batteries, which should last longer than the batteries that we have in electric cars today. Now, Digitimes reports that the Apple Car project will be unveiled in 2024 or 2025. So yeah, it's quite, you know, it's quite some time uh, until we'll see this in uh, fruition. However, this is interesting because Digitimes also reports that Apple will be unveiling a full car, not just sensors for third-party cars. And can you guess what? Ming-Chi Kuo reported literally the exact same thing back in 2018, that Apple will be working on their own actual car, which will actually be very similar to a Tesla car, likely a Model 3 competitor, and that it will be unveiled in 2024 to 2025. So this means that Digitimes report is either a carbon copy of Ming-Chi Kuo's report from two years ago, or they both have some solid info uh, in regards to what Apple will be working on uh, in the future, as in releasing a full-sized car. So let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about all of this? Would you actually buy an Apple car? And I don't know, I'm quite curious to see how it will integrate with all of your Apple devices. Like, can you just summon it from the Apple Watch? Very likely. Or do you just tell Siri to uh, pick you up or something like that? That'll be, that'll be cool. But let me know in the comments what do you guys think. And then we also have some updates in regards to Apple Silicon. So the upcoming processors that we'll find in the next-gen iMacs and the next-gen MacBook Pro 16-inch and stuff like that. So Bloomberg reports that Apple is now working on a 32-core CPU for late 2021. Not only that, but they're also working on a half-sized Mac Pro, so brand new Mac Pro that we just got uh, last year, but redesigned with Apple Silicon in mind, and that this will launch in 2022. And they're also working on a few other processors. For example, a chip that has 16 high performance cores and four energy efficient cores for a new MacBook Pro, very likely for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So this is the M1 MacBook Pro. We've actually done quite a few videos on this. You can watch our MacBook Pro uh, M1 versus the MacBook Air M1. But the thing is this processor, the M1, has four high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. And those four high performance cores can actually outperform something like a baseline um, 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if Apple quadruples the amount of uh, high performance cores in the next 16 inch iMac, well, the performance gains will just be nuts. Now, we have seen reports that Apple might even disable a few cores depending on how production goes. So if they manage to get a good yield in terms of these uh, new processors, then they'll have 16 high performance cores. Otherwise, they'll have 12 or even eight. But I mean, even eight high performance cores will be a massive upgrade over the M1 that we have now. And the M1, like I said, is just incredible. This Bloomberg report also claims that Apple is working on a custom GPU. We've seen this reported before that a brand new iMac that's coming out in 2021 will feature an Apple made GPU. And uh, this new report claims that the GPU that Apple is working on will have up to 128 cores. 
Now, just to give you guys an idea, the GPU inside the M1 Max has eight cores. <laughs> Eight cores compared to 128, which is what Apple's working at the moment. And keep in mind that the eight cores inside the M1 actually outperform any integrated graphics inside any laptop. Even the Intel XC graphics inside the 11 gen uh, processors from Intel, even those are significantly outperformed by the M1 processor. Like I'm honestly so excited to see the new, uh, the new processors from Apple in 2021 because the M1 has impressed me so much and yes, are M1 13-inch MacBook Pro review is coming uh, the following week, so definitely stay tuned for that because that's such a massive video in every single way. And again, I'm so impressed with this MacBook, battery life-wise and performance-wise. And we actually have some leaks in terms of the Apple Watch Series 7 from um, Tim Cook himself, kinda. <laughs> so he was actually on a podcast with Outside Magazine, and this is what he said. He said that when it comes to the future of the Apple Watch, Apple is testing mind-blowing capabilities in its labs, although not everything will actually see the light of day. He said, think about the amount of sensors in your car, and arguably your body is much more important than your car. So it's a pretty good hint that Apple will be adding more and more sensors to monitor your health on the Apple Watch, and that the future of the Apple Watch will really be focused on monitoring your health. You know, we've seen reports that the next-gen Apple Watch might have a glucose monitoring sensor. This year, in 2020, with the Apple Watch Series 6, we did get an oxygen level meter. So it is quite obvious that this is what Apple is trying to focus on, and I'm quite curious to see what we will be getting after 2021, after that glucose monitoring meter. What else? And now the Samsung Galaxy S21 has been leaked, so we actually got a, a video uh, which looks like an official ad that was found by Android Police, or more specifically, Max Weinbach. This shows pretty much the S21 design that we've seen before, uh, and again, it looks, again, pretty much identical to uh, the design that Content Creator has made a few months ago. It is quite interesting that it comes in violet, uh, and this appears to be the standard S21, which, by the way, is rumored to come with a 6.2-inch display, and then we'll also have the S21+, Plus, which is rumored to come with a 6.7-inch display, and then the big S21 Ultra, which is rumored to come with a 6.8-inch display. Oh, and the trailer for the S21 Ultra has also been leaked. And I don't know, I think it looks quite cool. I think I do quite like this design. Um, but again, it's so strange that it looks almost identical to the design that Content Creator made just a few months ago before any of the leaks, by the way. Okay, so what do we expect in terms of the Galaxy S21 Ultra? Well, the S Pen support is actually expected to be included on the S21 Ultra. It won't have an actual S Pen slot, but if you do have an S Pen, you will be able to use it on the S21 Ultra, which is pretty cool. But again, if you don't have a slot, then I don't really see the point. Like, you need to attach that pen somewhere. Um, and then at the same time, we are getting some pretty big camera upgrades. So uh, the second gen 180 megapixel sensor, 10x optical zoom from 4x that we have now, uh, which is a massive upgrade. Apparently Samsung will be using two periscope modules and this is how they'll be able to achieve that. On top of that, we're also getting a second telephoto module, um, a 10 megapixel 3x telephoto module, just for portrait mode shots, because 10x would be, you know, just too much zoom. And then we're also getting a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle module. Unfortunately, the Galaxy S20 Ultra was a disaster, at least at launch. It did get updates which made the camera better, but at launch it was pretty bad. Uh, the Note 20 Ultra, which you can watch the full reviews for both here, uh, the Note 20 Ultra was a massive improvement, and the software was much better, the camera was actually improved, the focusing especially, and the S21 Ultra will be a refinement of the Note 20 Ultra's camera and some new extra features on top of that. And finally, Samsung is launching an actual micro-LED display. Now, in case you don't know what micro-LED is, this is the next-gen technology in terms of the display panels uh, on top of OLED. So it has all the advantages of OLED with none of the downsides and a much higher brightness. Now, this panel that Samsung is making will launch in early 2021, so it's actually just a few months away, and it will be 110 inches in size, so it's pretty massive. But it is only 4K in terms of the resolution. And that's because Samsung just couldn't make the pixels small enough just yet. Like micro LED pixels, they have to be a specific size at the moment, they just cannot be as small as uh, OLED pixels. That will improve in the future, so we will start seeing smaller micro LED TVs, but at the moment, this is the smallest that we get. And uh, take a look at those bezels, or the lack thereof. <laughs> so this TV has a 99.99% screen to body ratio. Oh, and yes, it does support HDMI 2.1, of course. So if you have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, you will be able to use this at 4K at 120 Hz. 
So last week we gave away a Netgear Orbi 4G router and here's the winner so congratulations and this week we're giving away something very unique actually so this right here is like I said something extremely unique so it is a 5-in-1 USB charging cable I'll show you how it works in just a second so there you go you have essentially a bunch of cables here you have USB type A USB type C lightning all of that um, and you just plug this into any fast charger or any charger, USB type A cable, and then you can charge multiple devices at the same time. You have micro USB, two lightnings, and one USB type C. And we're actually giving away two of these. The link is in the description box down below. And by the way, if you want to buy one of these, uh, one pound from every purchase will be donated to Cancer Research UK. And even the design of them is actually, uh, it matches the color of the Cancer Research UK logo. So, you know, you're supporting a good cause, uh, but that's pretty much it for this one. Leave a like if you have enjoyed it, definitely subscribe for more Zone of Tech News episodes like this one and more in-depth tech videos like, uh, well, this one wasn't in-depth, this was live, by the way, unscripted, but we have done some really in-depth videos in the past week, so definitely check those out. Other than that, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.